Aloha and welcome. Uh, welcome to Think Tech, where we're raising public awareness about technology, energy, globalism, and diversification. As part of the Think Tech series, I'm your host, Carlos Juarez, for our show today, Global Connections. And it gives me great pleasure to welcome a special guest coming to us uh, to share a, a great story of an amazing organization. You're going to see a, an interesting program he's developed called Travel to Change. Uh, and I'm joined today in the studio by Thomas Kohler. Thomas, welcome, and thank you so much for this uh, chance to talk about your program. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah. Pleasure to be here. And, you know, for our listeners out there, I mean, I know we have a lot of listeners, given, you know, what we do here. We talk about global issues, mm -hmm. global links, global connections. And, you know, we live in a globally interconnected world. Uh, many of us, certainly us and many others, our listeners enjoy traveling. But here's an exciting way to combine travel, seeing the world mm -hmm. being, you know, engaged in it, mm -hmm. to combine it with some very interesting community, social action, social activities. Uh, tell us a little bit, uh, what is Travel to Change? Uh, give yeah, us a story. Yeah. yeah, so maybe I can I can walk you through how we got started yes. and, and how the idea evolved. So I'm very passionate about traveling yeah. and I'm also passionate about windsurfing and surfing. So mm -hmm. um, about seven years ago, I traveled to Mauritius in Africa mm -hmm. and with a group of, of fellow students from Austria mm -hmm. and we somehow felt privileged to have all the means to perform the sport but the local community didn't really benefit from our traveling yeah. activities. Yeah, yeah. At the same time there was a lot of mass tourism developments going on mm -hmm. in this region mm -hmm. so it struck us um, whether there isn't a way where you can link what you're passionate about to travel with a purpose mm -hmm. so that you can create a positive impact on the destination that you travel to. So a relatively simple concept, you're traveling, you're going to places, but rather than just go in your own little insular mm -hmm. world, why not connect to the community? Right. Why not do something that is meaningful for yourself, for mm -hmm. the community, so you're doing travel with a purpose? Mm -hmm. uh, and so you start with this initial idea, and tell us maybe a little bit about yourself. You say you're from Austria. I know you're living now here in Hawaii, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, a marketing professor at Hawaii Pacific University. Tell us about your own life story very briefly, and, and you know, you, you find yourself windsurfing. I mean, have you always done that, or was that a new passion? Yeah, ever, ever since uh, I was young, I was always very much into windsurfing. Yeah. It's part of the reason why I chose Hawaii as a place to study mm -hmm, for one mm -hmm, year. Mm -hmm. So um, I spent one year here as a student, mm -hmm. and then I had to go back to Austria, finish my PhD, and that was a time also where I traveled to Mauritius. Yes. And my research was around uh, crowdsourcing, so mm -hmm. the collaboration of, of many yeah. people to uh, create something that was originally done within the confines of an organization. Yeah. So that research inspired also the approach that we have to travel to change, where we provide a platform for travelers locals and organizations yeah. to create new ideas for meaningful travel so experiences. So in so many ways, this initiative reflects kind of like the new technology, new mm -hmm. ideas, new ways of, yeah. of fundraising, of doing mm -hmm. things. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more mm -hmm. specifically about this crowdsourcing idea because it's gaining a lot of interest in mm -hmm. many other ways of fundraising, of just, you know, connecting people mm -hmm. across the barriers. Uh, I want to remind our listeners, of course, we're here on Global Connections. We are uh, basically coming to you broadcasting live on the Internet. We do this every day at 2 and at 4, uh, and all of our shows are streamed live, and you can either join us on Spreaker.com, that's S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com, or Ustream TV. Uh, of course, all of our shows are also taped and, and kept uh, as uh, YouTube videos. You can catch up with them later and share them with others. Uh, available at Hawaii, I'm sorry, thinktechhawaii.com. That's thinktechhawaii.com all together. And again, joined here by Thomas Kohler. Thomas, uh, I'm just excited about this because I think it offers, uh, you know, those of us who, again, are, are interested in travel uh, and, you know, and here you've got an opportunity to combine it. And maybe we'll mention it throughout the, our, our show today, but uh, you've got a website that's hopefully probably simple. Is it mm -hmm. Travel to Change? Yeah, yeah, it's Travel to Change. And, and that's okay. Travel to the number. Right. So, to, yeah, so yeah, T R A V E L 2, and then change all exactly. together. Yeah, all together. And, and the two indicates that we want to bring together travelers and locals to create change for both groups. For travelers, yes. making your trip meaningful, uh -huh. and for locals, making it beneficial so they benefit from travel activities. Travel to change.com. Uh, both work. ORG is our main domain since we're a nonprofit organization. Uh, so ORG. As well um, as org. So travel yeah. to change.org mm -hmm. or, or dot com. Did Anything you, you manage, work, you'll find you found it. a way. Yeah. And I, then I encourage our listeners, again, look for this. It's a great little story that's now evolving. And now You, you've had a couple of years where you've been working with it to mm -hmm. fine tune it, and um, and so I want to talk a little bit about both some of the experience you've had, some of the issues and mm -hmm. challenges, and you know where you see this going, and and 
and uh, you mentioned this crowdsourcing. Some of our listeners will have heard of this, many will not, and we want to kind of unravel that. What does that actually mean? But tell us briefly, what are some of the, uh, I mean, uh, it began from a trip you took, but then you began to see, hey, here's an opportunity. Tell us more yeah, about yeah. the story. So, uh, this time, I would have been ready to go on a trip and, and do something along the lines mm -hmm, of, mm -hmm. of traveling and changing. But uh, I thought, why not create a movement and, and adapt this crowdsourcing approach mm -hmm. where we inspire all travelers to use their trips and link it to a meaningful experience. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, we got together and, and created this platform where we want to connect travelers locals and organizations mm -hmm. so that they can create new ideas for meaningful travel experiences mm -hmm. and then come together to make those ideas happen. Mm -hmm. And give us a couple of examples where yeah. again, let's say mm -hmm. you're, you, you, you know, maybe some of the earlier ones, I think mm -hmm. uh, if I'm not mistaken, might, might have been in Africa, right. other parts yeah. in Latin America, yeah. so mm -hmm. a group of, uh, an individual or a group of people might be interested in going mm -hmm. to X place. What is it they actually do and, and how do they yeah. go about it? So, so we have what we call the Travel to Change Challenges and a mm -hmm. challenge is a call for new ideas. Mm -hmm. So in 2011 when we started we called for ideas that were related to water. Mm -hmm. So um, one project that I was also um, joining as a traveler was in Kenya, where mm -hmm. there was actually a student from Hawaii, public health student, mm -hmm. and she had an idea to run um, a hygiene workshop where mm -hmm. she would teach basic hygiene practices mm -hmm. and safe water treatment uh, mechanisms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So she submitted her idea to our website, mm -hmm. and at the same time, there was a local nonprofit in Kenya that had the idea to use a soccer tournament to mobilize the community mm -hmm. to raise awareness about the particular issue. So, our platform brought the traveler from Hawaii mm -hmm. together with the local nonprofit community mm -hmm. in Kenya, mm -hmm. and they worked together to make this experience a reality. Mm -hmm. And in this case, was the travel just for that individual? Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, the idea is that. Um, we want to foster new ideas mm -hmm. and then test the ideas to see what the impact is, mm -hmm. what we need to adapt in order to improve mm -hmm. the impact, to make it sustainable, but then to offer successful projects as experiences for other yeah. travelers to join. So you want to be able to share that experience. And tell us maybe more how it's operationalized. You, you, you put out this call, let's mm -hmm. say you know, you've got a, a topic, an area, and even maybe a country mm -hmm. or, or place, uh, and then uh, people who are interested are somehow finding, and, and how do they learn about this? Is yeah. A lot of it is word of mouth, outreach. I mean, right. that's got to be a challenge, just, yeah. just letting people mm -hmm. know about mm -hmm. it. So for instance, uh, we ran a pilot challenge for Hawaii. Mm -hmm. the, the question was, how can travelers travel to Hawaii or within Hawaii to make a positive impact mm -hmm. on the lives of local communities? Yes. So we reached out to local nonprofit organizations, mm -hmm. encouraged them to provide an offer mm -hmm. for meaningful okay. travel experiences. Yeah. So the local organization here, if you've got an idea of something that can connect a potential traveler, right. uh, they can do yeah. something yeah. meaningful. Mm -hmm. okay. yeah. Because it really is important that we have the local mm -hmm. expertise, knowledge that the yeah. process starts or soon involves yeah, yeah. Uh, the local so communities. You're making that connection, so mm -hmm. somebody com coming from anywhere in the world, but here's a local NGO or nonprofit or some organization right. that has an, an ability to mm -hmm. connect you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, our vision is that if somebody comes to Hawaii, and then when you, let's say you book a, a trip on Expedia to come to Hawaii, mm -hmm. in the same way you get asked whether you want to offset your carbon footprint or you want to rent a car while you're here, mm -hmm. you have a button, whether you don't just want to go on vacation, but rather also yeah. Yeah. look for a travel to change opportunity. Yeah. And then you would see a list of meaningful travel experiences, mm -hmm. and you could pick the ones where you could make a valuable contribution mm -hmm. that is in line with your knowledge, your skills, mm -hmm. or what you're passionate about, yeah. so that you can do what you love and help along the way. Oh, that's a great travel. idea. And But again, th this is an individual, so somebody mm -hmm. anywhere might see an opportunity and say, okay, I'd like to do mm -hmm. that, uh, and then they begin this process. They're connected to this organization, mm -hmm. this issue, uh, and uh, and of course, uh, or maybe give us some examples. Or what, what were the types that were available here in, yeah. in this Hawaii? challenge yeah so uh, a lot of the initiatives involved outdoor activities mm -hmm. with a meaningful purpose so for instance uh, one idea was to um, go on hikes and mm -hmm. along the way uh, get rid of invasive species mm -hmm. or plant mm -hmm. endangered yeah. species yeah. so it's connecting what you would enjoy doing an outdoor activity mm -hmm. with something that creates mm -hmm. a positive impact yes. or on the other side uh, avoids a negative impact yeah. so yeah. Our, our winning idea came from uh, students 
from Kaiser High School, and they will go to the Big Island to raise awareness oh, about um, conserving mm. the natural environment yeah. And, yeah. And, and clearing a path mm. from trash. And, and yeah. um, they submitted their idea to our site, Fantastic. and then the crowd voted and selected yeah. them as the And it, it's a, this part fascinates me because in many ways it's like a, a sort of democratization mm -hmm. or sort of like a, look, the, the, the costs of participation are pretty low. Anybody mm -hmm. who wants to get engaged and, and be involved in this. And so you've got these, essentially like an appeal or a call that says, mm -hmm. hey, if you're interested, and mm -hmm. then you have ways to connect them mm -hmm. to a specific entity. Uh, and then the process is one in which somebody puts in a bid or, or effectively, you know, yeah, I mean, it, it really depends on the type of experience. It's something we have to um, get clear going mm -hmm. forward. So ideally, if you find an experience that you would like to join, if it's something that involves a simple activity that you can just join, you could get in touch with the organization and mm -hmm. schedule um, when you would join them. Mm -hmm. So for instance, if um, uh, Sustainable Coastlines Hawaii will be an example, they do beach cleanups here. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, every weekend, they might offer this mm -hmm. experience, and you could say, I will join this Saturday. And yeah. you can um, get the contact information through a website mm -hmm. or send messages or comments to yeah. this organization to oh, um, prepare your experience. Mm -hmm. And so there, um, as that process unfolds, you've got a dialogue going on. Before mm -hmm. the people even come or go to their site, mm -hmm. they're beginning to learn, do a little mm -hmm. research, and, and, and interact with the, and, and I mean, uh, there, there's just a lot of pieces and a lot of sort of stakeholders involved when you are connecting with, let's say, the local organizations. I mean, these are people who are both passionate about what they do, mm -hmm. and they're saying, hey, people are going to be coming here. Mm -hmm. They're going to be hiking. Why not, you know, give them an opportunity to help us, help right. us clean yeah. the, or, yeah. or help us have a, a better impact mm -hmm. on, on the natural mm -hmm. environment? Uh, and is, are, I mean, do you have a, by now a set of, a, I don't know, either explicit guidelines or sort of ways in which you foster that communication? Yeah, and, and yeah. Things like that. Uh, I think I need to explain that we, we changed our model ever mm -hmm. since we started. So yeah, yeah. our idea was to launch early and then learn from our experiences. Yeah, so yeah. throughout the um, three years, we learned a lot and constantly yeah, refocused it, of our, yeah. our approach. So um, we, we had or we have a list of things that we look for. Mm -hmm. um, one of the major criteria is whether there's local support for mm -hmm. this initiative. So on the site, um, locals and travelers, they can say this is an idea that makes sense, that is mm -hmm. sustainable, that mm -hmm. we want to have. So that's one thing that mm -hmm. is, a, is a baseline criteria. Mm -hmm. And then um, we want to also involve the crowd in evaluating the mm -hmm. impact of the experience. So mm -hmm. if you joined, um, let's say, this hike um, that involved getting rid of endangered species, mm -hmm. um, and, and you could then come back to the website and provide a review and say uh, it was a good experience, mm -hmm. but here's a suggestion how we could even create yeah, a better yeah, impact. Yeah. So it's, it's really about yeah. documenting the process and, and um, showcasing the impact that has been accomplished. And it gives it a certain sort of dynamic part. It's not just a one time, but it's continually mm -hmm. being kind of re you know, tweaked or, or focused, uh, and, and as you describe, I think this is critical for any of these type of initiatives. Some of it you're just learning by doing. You don't mm -hmm. know all the outcomes. You have some ideas, you've got a passion about it, but then some challenges, mm -hmm. some obstacles come along the way, and yeah. you know, we'll, we'll unravel some of these because uh, I think that's part of the fascinating story that you begin. And I think it, it's encouraging for any others who have some idea they're not quite sure, but mm -hmm. you try it out, and, and then there may have been some unintended outcomes or consequences, mm -hmm. uh, and how it builds and grows from that. Uh, I'm fascinated also just to, about how, you know, it, again, you, you begin this, you identify the people, but you, you describe how you have the crowds involved. And mm -hmm. I mean, clarify very quickly what does that mean? So in other words, other people who may not be going on it, they're also contributing some input, some feedback, mm -hmm. there's like yeah, a dialogue. Yeah, yeah, So if you look at the traditional model for, let's say, volunteer traveling, if, if you want to go to, say, Peru and want to do uh, a project there and, and work on something, mm -hmm then you would pay the tour operator a fee mm -hmm. so that the tour operator connects it to the local community. Mm -hmm. We want to um, avoid this fee yeah. and make it easy for travelers to connect with the yeah. local communities. So, and and yeah. rather than um, working abroad, we um, have a, a broader approach where we say, you don't have to travel someplace and work, but use your trip that you're already making mm -hmm. and find ways to join experiences that mm -hmm. are, um, let's say, also shorter-term 
yeah. any activities that would create a positive impact. Yeah. Well, this is great, and, and I'm going to you know encourage our listeners to stay tuned with us because we're going to continue to unravel some of this story, some of the challenges, and really uh, as well exciting opportunities that lie ahead of this example of traveling and combining it with important, meaningful experiences, connections to the community, etc. Uh, we're talking here with Thomas Kohler uh, on his new initiative called Travel to Change. And so join us in just a moment. We'll take a short break and be back with more on the story. We want to thank our underwriters, Hawaiian Electric Company and its affiliates Maui Electric on Maui and Hawaii Electric Light Company on Hawaii Island are deeply committed to the communities they serve. Galen Ho is a senior executive of BAE Systems a global defense, security, and aerospace company. The High Tech Development Corporation, the state's leading technology agency, attached to the Department of Business, Economic Development, and Tourism. Castle and Cook Hawaii, with a time-honored legacy that spans more than 160 years and revolves around its mission of investing in Hawaii, creating communities, and providing for the needs of our state. Hawaii Gas, formerly the gas company, a proponent of the liquefied natural gas initiative helping Hawaii achieve its transition to clean energy and a better energy future. Collateral Analytics, a Hawaii-based tech company empowering the real estate industry with greater and faster access to the tools and data they need to make better informed property investment decisions. I'm Nicole Horry. Thanks so much for joining us on ThinkTech. I'm Maria Kashem. See you next time. Aloha, welcome. We're back and we're live. And uh, we're joined here on our show, Global Connections. I'm your host, Carlos Juarez. And joining me is Thomas Kohler. And Thomas, uh, great to learn about this fascinating uh, new program you've, you've launched a couple years ago now, Travel to Change. Uh, the idea, somewhat simple, but uh, at the same time, reflecting, I guess, the new era we live on and building these connections in ways that, you know, whereas in the past, if you were traveling to Peru or to Kenya, you know, you might just call your travel agent, have them book you a ticket and, you know, they would take care of everything. In some ways, you're now kind of, I don't know, either democratizing mm -hmm. it or, or facilitating it in a way where somebody can uh, really look to go to some place mm -hmm. in the world and, and, and be able to find that connection before you go. But more importantly, once you're there, you're, you're connected in a way where you've got some meaningful experiences, mm -hmm. you're getting a lot out of it. Uh, I'm curious uh, if you might just give us a little more insight because as you've unraveled this, you had some initial ideas what you were hoping to do with this mm -hmm. from your, you know, your own initial visit to uh, Kenya and, and, and wanting to get more involved. Tell us a little bit maybe some, some of the ways in which the pro project itself kind of evolved mm -hmm. from you know, some yeah. of the early thinking, yeah. things that you didn't anticipate, things that suddenly as you mm -hmm. began to unroll, you, know, yeah. you, you realized you had to mm -hmm. kind of think differently about it. What were yeah. some of those yeah. issues? So, so one of the big issues uh, after the first year with the first project, we realized that uh, we want to differentiate ourselves from traditional volunteer projects mm -hmm. where you actually work abroad. Because only, mm -hmm. only um, two or four percent of all volunteer projects are skill-based, mm -hmm. and the impact that volunteer traveling creates on local communities is um, sometimes questionable. Yeah. Or is so critique. these, uh, just so we're clear, these are there are exist many opportunities where you can go and you know work in Australia right. or, or something, or go to Ireland and work in a sheep yeah. farm, or yeah. who knows. And traditionally, it's, yeah. it's uh, the flow is from the. Um, the northern the, hemisphere yeah, to, to the developing. The so go to Sri Lanka and work on a tea right. farm or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, so um, many involve um, labor intensive mm -hmm. work where you might not be qualified mm -hmm. to work on a construction project mm -hmm. abroad, and there might be local community members that could do this job as well. Yeah. yeah. And, and then also, one of the criticisms is that uh, oftentimes it's more to make the traveler feel good about mm -hmm. themselves and it, yeah. the impact that it actually creates in a local community is only an half of all yeah, yeah. yeah, that's not the run. So you're trying to kind of go around that and say, no, mm -hmm. what does the local community need or want, or what can they offer, mm -hmm. and how does that connect with your interests? Yeah, yeah. So rather than us suggesting the mm -hmm. project, we want to provide the platform and empower the local community yeah. so yeah. that they can create their offer. Mm -hmm. They have the yeah. local expertise, yeah. the knowledge, the infrastructure. Mm -hmm. They know what they want, yeah. and then they can define their offer. Yeah. Let's say yeah. I'm a local nonprofit here in Hawaii. I need some help with a certain issue. I'm mm -hmm. looking for a certain mm -hmm. skill set. Mm -hmm. I put this up as an offer mm -hmm. for an experience. Yeah. For the traveler, it's something that he can use to make his trip meaningful. And for the local community, it's a way to benefit from traveler's activities. Yeah. Well, now maybe if you could elaborate, I mean, how, what are some strategies about how do you find the 
local mm -hmm. organizations themselves? I mean, do you, yeah. you know, just randomly look, or do you uh, kind of just, you know, putting out feelers? You have leads, contacts? Yeah, I mean, that's that's uh, part of the work that we do. Mm -hmm. We we try to use social media and mm -hmm. create outreach list for specific areas, mm -hmm. and we have the challenges, what we call for a specific. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Topic. So, for instance, we're about to launch a sports challenge mm -hmm. that asks uh, the local nonprofit community if they use sports as a tool for creating social change, mm -hmm. whether they can define a meaningful travel experience, whether they can provide an offer for travelers mm -hmm. who are passionate about sports so that the travelers can do what they love, they mm -hmm. can do the sport, mm -hmm. and they can join a project that is related to their passion. Mm, fascinating. And, you know, I'm reminded, uh, we had a, actually one of our colleagues, uh, Aisha Nibi, who works mm -hmm. uh, uh, in the anthropology area, but she spent quite a bit of time, several years in Uganda. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if you're familiar with this yeah. story, but some of what she came was to connect with a lot of actually Cuban, uh, what they call internacionalistas. Mm -hmm. These are people from Cuba who are sent as kind of like aid workers, but mm -hmm. a lot of what they're doing is actually sports. Uh, mm -hmm. They are, yeah. you know, helping okay. coach teams, they're helping, you know, mm -hmm. with various African countries. And, you know, it doesn't seem, you know, like uh, at first, uh, what, what's going on there? But a lot of it is that uh, for these countries too, I mean, they're also developing sort of, you know, social and, mm -hmm. and, and you know, mental and physical, you know, capacities, uh, mm -hmm. helping improve. And in, ultimately, for these different countries in the developing world, it's helping improve their ability to participate in international sport arenas and yeah, the like. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and again, sports something we don't always realize, but in many ways there are universal activities that mm -hmm. people will do anywhere, and so mm -hmm. you can find those links. Mm -hmm. uh, now, from so on one hand, you have to find ways, innovative ways, to reach out and, and, mm -hmm. and you know through social media and the like. Is that also the same for those who are interested? I mean, how you you put word out in terms of this program itself? Yeah, yeah. So I mean, we were. A very small organization with just a bunch of, of volunteers yeah. who are trying to to build our user base both from a traveler side mm -hmm. and a local community side and the challenge of our two-sided marketplace in a way is to scale both sides at the same time yeah. uh -huh. so um, if we attract travelers and they don't see a, Some a, a compelling they offers yes. they're not interested to join on the other side the local nonprofit community they won't define their offers if they don't see enough traffic yeah. coming from the travelers so it's a real challenge mm -hmm. of scaling this um, mm -hmm. platform mm -hmm. and any crowdsourcing site struggles with that mm -hmm. to get critical mass of users mm -hmm. because only when you have a crowd that is both willing and capable to yeah. take on the tasks that you want them to do uh, will um, struggle and, and we're at this stage where we piloted our idea we learned a lot um, but now we need to um, gain traction and yeah, hopefully yeah. Uh, get more people involved because the more people are on board the more interesting connections yeah. you can make and, and the more valid our yeah. Well, yeah, and, 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 you know, it is one of these issues where I think, you know, you um, on one hand, those who are going to be involved from either side, they're going to be involved because they really are interested. Mm -hmm. They have a passion, and yeah. that's critical. They're not doing it for, you know, mm -hmm. other reasons. So there's a certain, um, I, well, what am I thinking of here, maybe almost a certain level of uh, altruism mm -hmm. or, or, or just, you know, inner passion about mm -hmm. these things. Uh, but as you well put it, you want to make sure that the you know that the, somehow the levels of, of uh, expectations are real. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you put too much in into expectations and they're mm -hmm. not met, you'll you'll find right. some disappointment. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, to me, this really speaks of the kind of example of uh, you know I often describe uh, in teach students I teach how you know the barriers are so low now to get involved in mm -hmm. you know connections uh, and you know whether we are part of a small community here, a state, a country. Mm -hmm these things are all getting blurred now yeah. because people have ways of connecting across borders uh, and facilitating that through social media mm -hmm. and through these kind of initiatives where effectively what you're doing is you know linking people across many many distances mm -hmm. um, tell us a little bit about what you know this notion some of our listeners may not be aware crowdsourcing mm -hmm. it's a term that of course is increasingly more and more common now in in different initiatives mm -hmm. describe what does that refer to crowdsourcing yeah, yeah. so the the official definition is that you take a task that has been traditionally performed within an organization and you outsource that to a large group of people. Mm -hmm. And the definition actually comes from the best example, from Wikipedia. Mm -hmm. So Wikipedia yeah. is basically crowdsourcing where a group of volunteers creates the content mm -hmm. and you end up with a solution that is far better than what we had yeah, before, yeah. or if a you, corporate solution. You could hire you know, 50 people to start mm -hmm. this, or you could just say, look, let's yeah. open it to the world, and yeah. pretty soon it kind of takes uh, care of itself. Yeah. 
but uh, specific to something like this, what you're doing is saying, look, if you're interested here, you know, mm -hmm. you, the windows are open, you know, yeah. the barriers are, are mm -hmm. reduced, so you can be involved. Um, and, you know, uh, I've seen uh, more and more examples of this, again, where, uh, particularly for some fundraising initiatives, where, again, using social mm -hmm. media, you can kind of, you know, mm -hmm. you're, you're targeting certain groups and you're also able to integrate good visuals mm -hmm. and stuff rather than the old-fashioned appeal letter right, right. you're actually getting now important. more like gosh here's some actual visuals yeah. and mm -hmm. things that and you can hear testimonials mm -hmm. uh, you can almost like travel vicariously just mm -hmm. going onto this mm -hmm. you know, website of some kind and that again uh, it's you know the new era we're in you know the technologies of our younger generations have come mm -hmm. you know come to transform mm -hmm. how we see things mm -hmm. um, this is a again an initiative that I think uh, you know gives you the excitement of a project but also the challenges because I mean mm -hmm. I'm sure as you have kind of hinted at already you start with certain ideas but along the way you realize you have to rethink mm -hmm. and um, and that's a process that I, I have to think uh, as you've got a group of you know peers and volunteers that work on this uh, there's a lot of like you know group discussions mm -hmm. and dynamics yeah, yeah. How has that played out, just in terms of you know getting different ideas on the table and 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 you know trying to get consensus in, in terms of managing yeah. our, our platform? Because it, it seems on one hand is a little yeah. bit of chaos. Everybody's right, in there, right. and, 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 and yeah. I'm sorry for the listeners if it all sounds <laughs> confusing or fuzzy. It's clarity is something that we really struggle with. We mm. still have to find our right approach. We, we're going to make uh, some more changes uh, next week, and then we'll uh, do an yet another relaunch. Mm -hmm. So um, our approach initially was that we don't want to overanalyze mm -hmm. the problem that we want to solve. We want to get started. So following the lean yeah. startup yeah. method, yeah. Um, putting a minimum viable product out there and then testing, observing, mm -hmm. tweaking, um, keeping what works, getting rid of what didn't work. So we, we've been through three major cycles mm -hmm. and, and we uh, constantly um, try to learn what works, mm -hmm. what doesn't work, yeah. and adapt our approach. So yeah. um, I think we're now at a, at a good state to hopefully gain traction and get critical mass mm -hmm. of users. We learned a lot. Um, there's a lot of things that we can go into. Um, a big thing is just providing a compelling platform, as you say, that is yeah. visually appealing, yeah. appealing yeah. that involves a lot so of So you work on the video. product itself. But, you mm -hmm. know, I'm intrigued. And, you know, you're an educator yourself. As a, as a marketing professor, you look at these things not just from, you know, uh, the sort of the maybe the issue itself, but even how, what can you learn from this? How can you use it as an opportunity to yeah. showcase, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, well, the, the what, what's involved, mm -hmm. what's entailed? Um, could you maybe briefly describe, I mean, ways in which you've been able to integrate it in some of your own, uh, either, you know, teaching of marketing yeah, itself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I like to follow a project-based learning approach mm -hmm. in my classes. Mm -hmm. So I split this semester in, in four parts. First, we'll look at the theoretic basics, mm -hmm. the key mm -hmm. concepts are important, and then uh, the students need to plan an initiative. Um, mm -hmm. So for instance, the pilot challenge was completely run by our Hawaii Pacific University marketing students. Mm -hmm. So they were grouped um, according to different tasks mm -hmm. that needed to happen in order to make the Travel to Change Hawaii Challenge a reality. Mm -hmm. So we had one group, they were taking on um, the social media outreach efforts. Another group was looking into a crowdfunding campaign to fund mm -hmm. the winning ideas. Mm -hmm. So the students worked together to make it a reality in the second phase, the mm -hmm. act phase, and then in the end they had to reflect and see what worked yeah, and yeah, what didn't yeah. work and, and write um, the lessons learned. Yeah. In so many ways, th this type of initiative lends itself to that because you want to, you mm -hmm. need that reflection, you need mm -hmm. the stepping back, and then not only that, you need the various sort of, you know, delegation of tasks and mm -hmm. groups and, and, you know, the world that we live in now and that our students, you know, perform and uh, this is what they do. You know, mm -hmm. you come together in small teams and then you have to bring them together mm -hmm. to understand the bigger picture, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think this is a great example, again, of one thing where, and, and sometimes it may be the brainchild of something that came out of your experience, but you're as a someone who can then connect different people who have passion about, you know, they're interested mm -hmm. in marketing. Here's a very practical way to yeah. uh, both learn from this. What are the lessons and mm -hmm. things you can draw from from what you've seen in, in maybe the, the the brief time you've uh, you've been working with some students on this. Have mm -hmm. some of them used lessons they've drawn from this to yeah. inform other things? Yeah, totally. Yeah. I think um, in the academic world, the world of of words and ideas and the abstract terms, mm -hmm. it, it's it's valuable. And and um, then we try to bridge that with yeah. hands-on, practical yeah. experience, yeah. making the ideas happen, and then we'll learn together yeah, yeah. what is effective and then students really gain um, hands-on yeah, yeah. experiences that will be useful 
yeah. uh, in the workplace. Absolutely, and it's a very dynamic thing. So it's not, a, you can read a case study in a textbook, that's one thing, and we do that, but here's something that's live and it's evolving. Yeah, and the case study is evolving. Yeah, yeah. that's right, yeah. and, and, and a work in progress, and, and very exciting. Something's coming, um, but, yeah. <laughs> well, what we'll do, uh, we'll have a, a, a short break right now, I want to return back, and, and when we come back, we're gonna you know, continue this great dialogue. I want to shift to some other initiatives, because you, you, you know, you've now got this experience with global uh, uh, travel to change, and it's opening up some new opportunities. We'll talk about one in particular that's involved with the Atlantic Rainforest Institute, again, building on this experience. Uh, we're joined here by Thomas Kohler, talking about uh, travel to change, a very innovative program that he's put in place, combining travel to different places with meaningful experiences, social and connections to communities. So join us, uh, we'll be back in just a minute. Aloha, I'm Nicole Horry for ThinkTech. For nearly half a century, the Hawaii Foreign Trade Zone Number 9 has brought the benefits of the Foreign Trade Zone program to Hawaii businesses and entrepreneurs. DBET, the Department of Business, Economic Development and Tourism, operates Hawaii's Foreign Trade Zone program to encourage international business and economic development. The Foreign Trade Zone's mission is to increase the amount of international trading activity in Hawaii, thereby providing employment opportunities for the residents of our island state. For more information, see ftz9.org. I'm Nicole Hori. Mahalo. And welcome. We're back. We're live. And we're Think Tech Hawaii. This is the Global Connection Show. I'm your host, Carlos Juarez. Uh, we're joined today by uh, my guest, Thomas Kohler. And Thomas, uh, you're originally coming to us from Central Europe in Austria, of course. Uh, and like so many people in the world today, I mean, your interests take you all over. You've traveled mm -hmm. quite a bit. You've initially made your sail, you know, way out to Hawaii. Uh, and yet, uh, after years went by, back to Europe, finishing some, you know, graduate studies there to, to do a doctorate. And, and now, uh, you're, you know, like, you know, many of us, many hats. You're an educator on the one hand, working, uh, you know, in the uh, university setting, teaching marketing. But like so many others, ultimately you're passionate about things that are interesting, mm -hmm. you know, the community links and connections, uh, you know, having a meaningful purpose in life because, you know, not of all, we don't want to have that drudge job where all you do is, you mm -hmm. know, show up and, you know, rubber stamp things. Instead, how can you combine your interests, your passions, your knowledge, and here, Travel to Change, a very interesting initiative that started as an idea and it has mm -hmm. been evolved as you've described. Um, now, as we move ahead, I mean, you've seen the opportunity now that this has taken to open some other doors, mm -hmm. some other initiatives, and, and one in particular I want you to share a little bit. Uh, uh, this has helped you now uh, launch or, or begin a process of, of embarking on a new initiative with the Atlantic Rainforest Institute. Mm -hmm. Tell us first, what is this institute, and then yeah. what's the initiative that yeah, you're yeah. involved with? So it's, a, it's a local nonprofit um, from Brazil mm -hmm. that uh, has the mission to protect the Atlantic rainforest. Mm -hmm. um, as I learned, the Atlantic rainforest is very threatened. Mm -hmm. So it, it's um, there's only seven percent left, and uh, the critical part is that almost no pe nobody knows about it. Mm -hmm. So while we talk about the rainforest, we usually mean the Amazon mm -hmm. rainforest. Okay. And so, maybe just for geography, I mean the Amazon is of course the vast right. you know, yeah. main, main hinterlands. Is yeah. the Atlantic somehow closer to the eastern parts of Brazil? Yeah, so it's on the coast yes. uh, towards the south. Okay. And, and there's uh, actually the, the president of this organization, mm -hmm. he's also an entrepreneur, and he had this idea to <coughs> come up with a new approach to mm -hmm. protect this piece mm -hmm. of land okay. and and what he's done is he created this product an energy shot that is made with grana the fruit um, that comes from the rainforest area mm -hmm. and he's selling this product uh, in Europe and the revenue goes back to protect the mm -hmm. piece of land at the Atlantic rainforest okay. coast mm -hmm. so um, they approached us and asked whether we could call for ideas how to raise awareness mm -hmm. about the Atlantic rainforest and then as an incentive for campaigns that might be submitted mm -hmm. to this challenge mm -hmm. the winner gets a trip where he can travel to this area in Brazil mm -hmm. and make his or her idea happen. Oh interesting mm -hmm. so here again uh, one of the ways these things have unfolded you know somebody came across or learned about mm -hmm. your initiative and said hey you know we've got some something going on down here in the you know uh, in the case of uh, South America and Brazil and so now essentially what you have is the Atlantic Rainforest mm -hmm. Challenge this is right. a new initiative yeah. connected to travel to change mm -hmm. uh, and um, you know uh, is the challenge to think of what uh, how ways in which people can you know either create the awareness right. itself yeah. and, and yeah. mobilize mm -hmm. you know opinion yeah. and support yeah. yeah okay so the goal is to raise about two million 
US dollars mm -hmm. to protect uh, a certain piece of land, mm -hmm. uh, the Atlantic Rainforest. Mm -hmm. And we specifically want to engage uh, students to come up with ideas mm -hmm. how they could raise awareness about how to protect mm -hmm. this piece of land. So it's a mixture of raising the awareness, but raising some funds that can also be used to, yeah, to help the campaign. The interesting component is that uh, rather than having traditional source of funding, mm -hmm. the participants of the Rain Atlantic Rainforest Challenge, they provide their own funding in a way. Because mm -hmm. if you drink one of these energy shots, so think about um, a small version of Red Bull mm -hmm. that is organic, and, and Red Bulls are Austrian, aren't they? Yeah, <laughs> they are. Yeah, <laughs> Many yeah. don't realize that. I do. <laughs> yep, I know. You do. Um, Red Bull. A prominent brand. Yes. Um, but if you contrast this product, mm -hmm. it's called Sudden Rush, um, to Red Bull, it's all organic, and the revenue goes back mm -hmm. to the region. Yeah, yeah. So as a participant of our Atlantic Rainforest Challenge, if you buy a shot of this energy drink, mm -hmm. then you fund the winning idea. Oh, okay. So okay. Yeah. Um, we basically can run this challenge without any resources, yeah. but rather the resources come from the participants. Yeah, so encouraging them to, to be involved, participate by, by a movement by this to product. Mm -hmm. You got to get it into Costco. That's the key. Big, oh, that you know, would be big. big yeah. large <laughs> supplies of it. Uh, <laughs> uh, very interesting. So essentially, through this product, they're creating some funds that are then used, and and I imagine for protecting, right, it probably takes different ways where they're either preventing, you know, mm -hmm. the ability to sell it off mm -hmm. to you know ranchers or yeah. other you know developers, yeah. uh, and beyond that to create awareness of why why should we protect mm -hmm. this, and it's not just a you know touchy feely. Let's you know save the land. There there are real reasons, particularly whether yeah, the absolutely. Amazon or here, where yeah. many of the products that mm -hmm. uh, come from there, not just you know energy products, mm -hmm. but a uh, whole range of things. Uh, absolutely, that, uh, yeah, it is we, one of the the most diverse region, mm -hmm. and and uh, it's a. Uh, the, the ecosystem is threatened. Yeah. There's, there's a and lot Brazil, of, again, a country with a dynamic growth, mm -hmm. and, and you know that's exciting on one hand, but it also has come at a price. You know, yeah. uh, you know, basically eroding a lot of the natural environment mm -hmm. there. So this Atlantic Rainforest Initiative we've just described basically is a way, again, of building on this travel to change experience, giving people a, an opportunity to have a uh, well a, a way to participate mm -hmm. in this and, and to have a meaningful uh, making a, a difference. And so that the winner of, of and the, is the idea or the challenge. Ways to create awareness, maybe some strategy, mm -hmm. some yeah. you know, some yeah. program. Yeah, and, and, and the idea is also to use your trip there to mm -hmm. make a positive impact. Yes. So when you submit your idea, you have to describe how, how, you, how will use you do it? your trip yeah. to raise awareness. So yes. if you let's say you're an artist and you want to create uh, a photo story or a yeah. video, yeah. then you could say, I want to take this trip to Brazil. Mm -hmm. I have this great idea how to raise awareness, how to get more people behind mm -hmm. the cause. Yeah. And if I win, this I'll make is, this happen. This how, yes. And then you you go there, um, you meet the local mm -hmm. community, you learn about their issues, mm -hmm. uh, you work hand in hand with them to mm -hmm. um, yeah, make your yeah, idea yeah. happen. Fascinating, and with these with these type of projects, basically you've set up a scheme where you've got like a deadline to submit mm -hmm. things, and and then yeah. along the way, are people giving feedback? Yeah, yeah, that's uh, a critical component yes. um, because we believe that the ideas get shaped by diversity of people contributing yes, to the yes. ideas. Excellent. So um, it's really a matter of evolving these ideas mm -hmm. to get them ready so that they can be launched, and then once they're implemented, to document the impact the idea has created, mm -hmm. and uh, we want to bring together a diverse group of people that can shape these ideas. So for, for the Rainforest Challenge, um, in the first phase, people can submit their idea, and then we have a physical workshop, face-to-face -face workshop, where we have the people from the Atlantic Rainforest Institute who have experts mm -hmm. um, for the subject matter come together with the finalists, and then they can refine the idea, and then in the end, we'll have a uh, winning oh, idea excellent. that will be realized. Excellent. Oh, very great. Well, we're taking a very short break here. We'll be back in a moment. I'm Carlos Juarez. Uh, this is Global Connections and the Think Tech uh, Hawaii series. Uh, we're talking with Thomas Kohler. It's a great story about this uh, interesting, innovative program he's developed called Travel to Change, where you combine meaningful experiences working with local communities with travel. Uh, it reflects, again, the new social media, the new technologies that are so much a part of our lives. And uh, I want to just encourage you, stay Stay tuned and we'll be back in just a minute for more on the story. Aloha, I'm Maria Kashem of Think Tech Hawaii and I want to tell you about our Think Tech talk shows. If you didn't know it, Think Tech streams video and audio for all of its shows live on the internet from 2 to 5 p.m. every weekday afternoon. 
and we replay them all night long on Ustream.tv. Visit ThinkTechHawaii.com for our live stream and YouTube links. Raise your awareness on ThinkTech. I'm Maria Kashem, and I'll see you there. Aloha, I'm Jay Fidel of ThinkTech. We have some news for you. In addition to our ThinkTech TV show and our Asia in Review show on Alelo 54, as of January 1st, we're adding Community Matters to play also two hours a week. Check out thinktechaway.com for the specific times of each of these shows. We hope you enjoy all three. Mahalo, I'm Jay Fidel. We're back and we're live and we're Think Tech and this is Global Connections. I'm your host Carlos Suarez and we're coming to you from the dynamic downtown Pioneer Plaza studio here of Think Tech Hawaii. Thank you for joining us and uh, today our guest Thomas Kohler has been helping us understand a very exciting uh, initiative, Travel to Change. Uh, combining travel to different parts of the world uh, with meaningful experiences, social inner, you know, connections and, and, and just a whole range of social action projects. And, uh, you know, you've shared a good overview of how this has worked and obviously it's an on going project and then you know things that you're learning along the way uh, we described just a moment ago the Atlantic uh, rainforest initiative uh, that is a new challenge but uh, uh, maybe tell us finally one of the others that's on the table now is the new Hawaii challenge mm -hmm. and what what is this about yeah yeah so the goal is to inspire travelers to travel in a meaningful way to Hawaii mm -hmm. um, there's evidently um, a lot of traveling going yeah, on here. The about biggest eight million uh, yeah. come every year, but but let's make some of those mm -hmm. a little bit better yeah. better experiences exactly. for us yeah. and for them. Absolutely. Yes. So we will call for ideas and we'll reach out to the local nonprofit community and ask them how they could host meaningful travel experiences. Mm -hmm. We'll then involve the travelers and say um, they can vote and comment on the offers and say this is something I would like to join, mm -hmm. and then we'll hopefully. Uh, be able to support the best experiences that emerge out of this mm. challenge. And how, do, how exactly does it work where you get, you, you've got almost like a voting process that yeah, goes yeah, on yeah, essentially? Yeah. So mm -hmm. um, the usual approach is we combine public voting mm -hmm. where everyone that is registered can vote on their favorite idea mm -hmm. and then we have a, a jury of experts mm -hmm. that will then make the final decision mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to ensure yeah. that the actual experiences mm -hmm. are vetted and yeah. benefit the local community. And and just maybe to clarify, so you're, you're voting on ideas and then once the idea, let's say, gets selected, mm -hmm. that means it, it kind of gets a green light, it's approved? Yeah, yeah, or, it, it's, or... um, it's approved in a way and if we have the means, we will uh, support mm -hmm. the ideas and, and guide them towards mm -hmm. implementation. Yeah, yeah. Um, ideally, we have funds available to kickstart mm -hmm. these uh, projects mm -hmm. or to help them Grow. Mm -hmm. So the local nonprofits, they will get support from the travelers, mm -hmm. and hopefully we can provide a platform for them to help them realize their ideas. Has up to I mean to date, and maybe or even as you envision in the future, have, mm -hmm. has it involved any fundraising? Like I don't know, from foundations or donors, mm -hmm. or is it more just this more individualized people yeah, participating? Yeah. I mean, it's something we're working on. Mm -hmm. um, we want to, and we have partnered with companies before, mm -hmm. so. Uh, companies more and more they also need to create social value yeah, not just yeah, economic yeah. value mm -hmm. so partnering with travel change is an opportunity for them mm -hmm. to um, pursue their social mission also mm -hmm. and make mm -hmm. a positive impact yes. so we partner with uh, a European travel company for one of the challenges mm -hmm. and got funding through them and then with these funds we could support the winning ideas that yeah, emerged. Yeah. From oh, this is exciting again! And for those of you who uh, might be in the corporate world or just a you know philanthropist with money to spare, um, <laughs> this is a great opportunity because it really has a meaningful purpose. You're you're helping connect communities where again maybe like Hawaii we have millions of tourists, but of course we know many of them come and, and maybe aren't either mm -hmm. having a positive impact on mm -hmm. uh, on our environment uh, or or even the community. There's often a disconnect there, uh, and here we're trying to encourage ways in which the community can really define what are the needs, what are the opportunities, mm -hmm. uh, and tourists uh, or travelers, if you will, mm -hmm. who come can really get a more meaningful experience. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, I think it helps to redefine what it means to travel in yeah. so many ways. You know, mm -hmm. it's not the, uh, the traditional, you know, ugly tourist, but Absolutely. in more, really, you're kind of connecting people mm -hmm. with passions, mm -hmm. uh, and and you know, it will not only impact uh, the, if you will, the mindset of those who experience that, but 
the communities that are you know affected more and more and more mm -hmm. to the point and maybe uh, as a final thought here I mean uh, from the experience of some who've been doing this I mean are there any uh, I don't know takeaways or, or what what are some anecdotes you could share about those who've done this experience I mean you you begun yeah, with your idea yeah yeah so I think it's it's uh, any travel experience changes you in a way and, mm -hmm. and um, participating in a meaningful activity really um, broadens your horizon yeah. you get to know about uh, the local communities, the local culture, immerse yourself, mm -hmm. stay with the local community. So I think that's beneficial for a traveler and from a local host perspective, um, it's also not just the support they may get from the travelers, but it's really about the personal connections that yeah. they can make no, and no. then you know, really build community around the cause, no. um, draw in travelers who will support them with their skills and knowledge yeah. and come together to create meaningful travel experiences that will be beneficial for the local communities. Right. So, I mean, um, we got a lot of good feedback from the travelers that have mm -hmm. participated mm -hmm. in a travel to change experience. Mm, yeah. And um, every, every experience is unique yeah. and, and we want to offer a broad range of offers and it's really focused around people's passion. So yeah. rather than working on a project that is considered not always fun, uh, we want to build on people's passion. So yeah, yeah. things that people intrinsically want to do that are engaged in, so sports, mm -hmm. arts, mm -hmm. design, photography, yeah, yeah. Um, for educators, if you have a certain skill set to share, knowledge yeah, to share, yeah. how can you use that to make a meaningful mm -hmm. contribution yeah. while you're and traveling maybe, anyway? Maybe real briefly on this, uh, the various projects that have been going on, uh, mm -hmm. that is the, the program themselves, are they very short term, do they vary, is, is that even something that is wide yeah. ranging or yeah. how, what would you describe the length of time that somebody might be involved? Yeah, so um, let's say when you go on a trip that was our original model, it would involve at least two or three weeks, but we think we can have more impact if we provide opportunities for short term activities for mm -hmm. travelers who are already on the way. Mm -hmm. So rather than inspiring travelers to go on a trip to volunteer, we want to reach out to the travelers who are already traveling mm -hmm. and get them to think about how can they make their trip better yes, and meaningful. Yes, yes. So um, it, it really can be an activity where you can do on a day, mm -hmm. um, several days. It could days. be short term, it could be a few weeks. Exactly. So yeah, we, no. we don't, we don't yeah. define that, yeah. but when you submit an experience idea mm -hmm. as an offer, you will define yeah, uh, what, when what, this experience mm -hmm. will take place and what the duration the is. And everything. Yeah. Yeah. So I, my sense is you're kind of open to a lot of flexibility. Yeah. You can't define it so yeah. clearly. And I mean, uh, maybe as we're getting close to our, our the end of our, our discussion here, I mean, this is something that, of course, we've described as a work in progress. You're learning mm -hmm. as you go. In your own mind, as you've discussed with others and thought about this, I mean, where do you see this going? Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's opened up, uh, you know, I guess some exciting initiatives uh, to connect people uh, beyond that does it I mean it, it, in some ways it builds communities across mm -hmm. borders in ways that mm -hmm. uh, like I can imagine you know if you're the local NGO that's helped or you know, a nonprofit that's helped you know connect somebody who's traveling already you're then fostering kind of like a, a longer enduring mm -hmm. relationship so yeah. it's not just this one one but yeah. maybe kind of creating a longer term and that yeah. that's part of mm -hmm. it as well yeah so our, our vision is really to inspire all travelers to make their trips meaningful mm -hmm. by joining travel exchange experiences so, um, as you say, right now, I mean, it's, it's not as interesting to join if you only want to participate in the experience and you don't have ideas for yourself. So yeah. that will take time for us to develop the offers. Mm -hmm. So right now we're really focused on building the pool of experiences so that mid to long term, you as a traveler, if you come to Hawaii, and you're passionate about, let's say, sports, mm -hmm. you go to our site, you put in sports, you put in and Hawaii, you, and, and you have, have a list yes. of options where you yeah. wouldn't just go, let's say, on a certification where you stay in a hotel yeah. in Waikiki, but rather you 
yeah. um, join a local nonprofit that uses surfing as a way to yeah, yeah. support the local community, for yeah, instance. Yeah. So the goal uh, as you build this is over time, you've got this menu of choices and experiences people can draw mm -hmm. from. It's uh, documented. You can see testimonials and mm -hmm. blogs with the experience. Uh, really a very exciting way, again, of integrating new technologies, of helping make these connections, which is really what it's all about, mm -hmm. uh, connecting people, the right kind of people. Uh, and a great story. I want to thank you, Thomas, for this opportunity to learn you. about your initiative, Travel to Change. A few years ago, it started as an idea, and now you've been formalizing it. You've been teaching about it, integrating it into some of your own coursework, uh, and ultimately, building those connections. And that's what we're about. This Global Connections show is one in which you know we've got different goals. One of the ways is we bring people here from all over the world or people who are you know passing through. But we also make better sense of this interconnected world. And this is a story that helps us do that, helps us understand how the new technologies really connect us and, and exciting opportunities. Travel to Change with Thomas Kohler. And that, again, travel, T-R-A-V-E-L, to the number two change and it's dot org or dot com you'll find it yeah. one way or the yeah. other yeah. Uh, and i encourage our listeners to do that uh, we were out of town now and we're going to have to wrap things up uh, i'm carlos juarez your host here on global connections uh, and part of our think tech series uh, i want to thank you all for joining us uh, thank the many who have made it possible here as always our production manager ian montana our communications director Chrissy Goffigan, and Jay Fidel, who helps bring it all together. And I want to thank you, our listeners, for listening and for joining us. Uh, Think Tech will be back, uh, as we always are here every week, uh, in our next show in the series. Uh, so please stay tuned for that. If you'd like to get any of our daily advisories or get on our e mailing list, uh, do so at thinktechhawaii.com, and you can see some of the upcoming shows. Uh, remember, as well, we broadcast live, so you can catch us live, uh, or you can get any of the podcasts saved as YouTube files uh, and uh, share them as well. So, of course, uh, I'll stay, look forward to seeing you at our next episode of Global Connections. Thank you. Aloha.